What information should you have on hand as you prepare for a telephone social security disability hearing? Uh, one of the biggest changes due to the coronavirus COVID-19 crisis is that Social Security has stopped doing live hearings, not doing video hearings where you have to appear at a hearing office, and disability hearings are being done by phone. And because of that, you are not going to be in the same room as your lawyer. And that is a problem because I think that one of the advantages of having a lawyer by your side is the moral support. The, just the guidance, um, just being able to have a quick look with your lawyer, are you heading down the right path, that type of thing, that's gone. So what that means is you've got to prepare differently, and I prepare my clients differently uh, for telephone hearings than I do for in-person hearings because they're more on their own, and that's just unfortunate, but that's just the case. And while we have the option of objecting to a telephone hearing and asking for a live hearing down the road, who knows when that's going to be? It could be six months, eight months, a year. Who knows? Um, so I, if you want to go forward with your hearing, and many people do because of the long delays they've already undergone uh, and dealt with, um, then you want to just be prepared a little bit differently. So here's the things that I'm telling my clients to be prepared for and to practice as they get ready for a telephone hearing. First of all, you have to know your medical conditions, your diagnoses, specific diagnoses. So you want to be able to talk to the judge if they say, why do you think you're not able to work? You want to be able to say, because I have a medical condition, I've got a herniated disc, I've got congestive heart failure, I've got kidney disease, I've got a DVT, and it causes the following symptoms. But it's important to have a clear idea of what exactly is wrong with you, a formal diagnosis, not a slip disc or nerve problems, which is kind of um, slang. You want to be specific as much as specific as you can, identifying the specific disease and the diagnosis you've got. I would also tell you that when I'm preparing my hearings, I like to focus on maybe three, four diagnoses. I don't like to go in with 10 things. I think it's best to start with three or four and just deal with that. Let the judge uh, have an idea about uh, what's going on with the, the three or four things you've got uh, going on with you. Uh, it's important to know when you got the diagnosis. Um, you know, was it something that you had for years while you were working through it and got worse over time or did it happen because of a trauma of some sort? So it's best to be able to put some sort of a date range to it. You know, when were you formally diagnosed? And again, if you had an MRI or a CT, that may have been you know, April 15th, but you may have been having problems since December. That's something that you want the judge to be able to know. And of course, the symptoms, the specific symptoms that arise from your diagnosis, um, and again, not, you don't want to say not very long, not very far. You know, I can, because of my back problems, I can sit for seven to 10 minutes. I've got to take a break and stand up and move around, uh, walk around the room for three to four minutes, and I can sit down again. I can sit for a total of two hours in the day, then I've got to lie down for at least an hour. I've got to take a, a break to sleep for 45 minutes because of the terrible headaches I've got. Whatever it is, you want to be very, very specific about that. Number two, you should have a list of all the medications you are taking. And again, if you can, can have a list and that'll be submitted to the judge, um, but if, you be able, if you're able to talk to the judge about what each medication is, what it treats, and more importantly, the side effects of the medication because you want the judge to know that this medication makes you drowsy, this medication makes you urinate, this medication gives you headaches, and you want to be as specific as you can about that. And if you've had an increase in dosage over time, let the judge know about that as well, because that can show your condition is getting worse and the, and the doctor keeps increasing the dosage. I had a case recently where that was a situation. My client has uh, trigeminal neurology, which is a nerve problem in the face, and they keep increasing increasing her medications to the point where she's basically a zombie. Well, you know, at the earlier stages when the medications were lighter, she could work. But as they got stronger and, and more frequent dosage, dosages, uh, she lost the ability to be able to work. So that's something important to, uh, to be able to tell the judge about. And again, side effects, I can't emphasize enough how important side effects are. Um, I want to talk about the, the next two, but just a quick break. 
If you've not already done so, I want to invite you to visit my website at ssdanswers.com. You can download my free Secrets to Winning Disability Survival Kit, something I think you'll find very useful if you're pursuing disability benefits, whether at the initial stage or at the hearing. But I wanted you to know about that, and I encourage you to visit my website, ssdanswers.com, uh, for either a free case evaluation or for that survival kit. Uh, and I hope you do find that helpful. Uh, now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Uh, number three, uh, th number th the third thing you want to have available to you when you appear at a disability hearing by telephone you want to be, if you have physical problems, um, you want to be, again, very specific about certain tasks, sitting, standing, walking, uh, lifting, carrying, stooping, crawling, kneeling, crouching, climbing ladders, ropes, scaffolds, working around hazardous equipment, working around dusty environments or hazardous fumes extremes of cold or heat. These are all things that are relevant if you've got physical problems that may cause the grid rules to come into a play. And again, again, the grid rules are going to apply if you're over 50. But regardless, when it's physical, you can be sure the judge is going to ask you about all these physical issues that appear, by the way, on the Social Security Functional Capacity Form. And your attorney can give you a copy of that. But you want to be very, very specific and have answers. The time to think about how much you can lift, how long you can stand, is not at the hearing. And the time to do it is a month before where you really think about it, write it down, and have it in front of you because that information is something you're certainly going to be asked about. Uh, number four, if you have uh, f the fourth thing you want to have in front of you is if you have uh, what they are called they, they call them in the social security, the social security world non-exertional impairments or non-physical issues. These are things that uh, might be pain. Uh, you need to rest during the day. Um, how often you have to have your legs extended. Things that would interfere with working, but that are not necessarily physical limitations, but maybe they're postural limitations. How long you have to stretch. What you have to do to stretch. The need to take unscheduled bathroom breaks or the need to walk around and get a, a fresh air. A bathroom breaks in particular are a really big deal in disability cases because most employers don't let you take four or five bathroom breaks during the day or if you have diarrhea or constipation and you've got to be in the bathroom for 45 minutes that's a problem as well. So those are all things you want to have at top of mind, right in front of you. And of course, the main thing to keep in mind is what disability is all about, and that is your capacity to work. So remember, this is not about your diagnosis. It doesn't matter what your diagnosis. You could have diabetes, three herniated discs, congestive heart failure, and kidney disease. That does not make you disabled. It's the symptoms and the medication side effects that make you disabled. So that's what you need to be focusing on. And again, you're not, talking, not worried so much about your past work, but the question is, could you do any kind of job, a simple entry-level job. Imagine a job you're sitting at a table putting ink pens in a box. I call it a warm body job. Can you fog a mirror? That's what Social Security is focused on. So if you think about those things, focus on those things, your chances of success at a telephone hearing go way up. Hope you found this useful. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, and I hope to hear from you soon if I can be of assistance. Thanks a lot. Hi, this is Jonathan Ginsberg, and I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to know more about how to win your Social Security Disability case, I'd like to invite you to download my Secrets to Getting Approved Early Survival Kit that I created just for people like you. Currently, I'm making the survival kit available at no cost, and I encourage you to grab your copy now. Some of the topics I cover include, how do I know if I have a case? Is it the right time for me to file my claim? nine common mistakes that can doom your case, the three must-have arguments you use to win your case, and a topic that every disability claimant wants to know, how to avoid trick questions from the judge. If you or a loved one need to win Social Security Disability Benefits, you'll find this survival kit essential reading. Download your survival kit right now and at no cost. Just visit ssdanswers.com backslash survival and sign up. It's that easy. Please act now. And as always, I wish you the best.